Well, good morning, Grace Church. So good to welcome you here today. If you're new to Grace Church, my name is Wes. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's going to be a good day today, and I'm glad you're here with us. If you are new to Grace Church, please stop by guest services right after the service is over. We have a gift that we'd like to share with you just to say thanks for being our guest. You can find them out in the lobby right after the service is over. Take a moment, fill out your Let's Connect card that you received in the message notes on your way in. You can drop it off at one of the five baskets at each of the doors on your way out today. We have services throughout the weekend, so if you're not available at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, please join us at one of these other times. You can also watch online at egracechurch.com or Facebook Live. We want to welcome those who are watching and joining us for worship that way. We have a fantastic family ministry here at Grace Church, and our children meet during our contemporary services like this one at our family ministry center, which is right next door. Children uh, age zero through fifth grade are invited to find Jesus as their forever friend and hear about that. We have a youth ministry here that's called Revolution, and our middle and high school students meet on Wednesday night. You're invited this coming Wednesday night. And this coming Friday night, please join us for Choose Recovery right here in the sanctuary. We believe that Jesus brings healing, and we've seen it with our own eyes, Jesus bringing healing to our addictions and afflictions. Rochelle will be here to tell you more about that this coming Friday night here in the sanctuary. I do want to let our church leadership know that we have a charge conference meeting, which is a little business meeting uh, we'll be having on Monday, the 14th of October, to uh, consider the sale of our portion of property that we have in downtown Fort Myers. So all leaders, please join us uh, for that. Everybody's welcome to attend. Well, friends, this is a World Communion Sunday, and we're going to take this opportunity as a church to have a little bit different type of worship service where we can experience God's grace and presence in our life. We're going to have communion together. We're going to sing together. We're going to have some time of prayer together. Um, here's the four things we're going to do. We're going to adore God. We're going to confess our sins before God. We're going to give God thanks, and we're going to come to the Lord with supplication, which means just asking the Lord for our needs, asking for forgiveness and healing. Uh, last week, Pastor George shared with you that a bunch of us went away to this conference and we came back just with a renewed passion for prayer here at Grace Church and in our world and our community. We're praying that God would bring revival in this church and all of the churches in this community. We're praying for an awakening in Southwest Florida as well as our country and world. And friends, every great move of God begins in prayer. That includes in our lives. That includes your life. If you're looking for God to uh, deepen your faith, where does that begin? It begins in prayer. If you're looking for God to repair some relationship, where do you and I begin? It, we begin in prayer. If you're asking God to help transform this broken world and to bring healing to unjust systems or a whole myriad of problems, where do we take that? We take it to the Lord first in prayer. That's where it begins. And so to begin this journey together, we're going to... Uh, Give God thanks first and foremost. And we're going to begin by looking at a passage of Scripture when a guy named Moses encounters the Lord through a bush that catches on fire. Check this out in Exodus 3, verses 1 through 5. Here's what happens. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he went deep into the wilderness near Sinai, the mountain of God. Suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a blazing fire in a bush. Moses was amazed because the bush was engulfed in flames, but it didn't burn up. Amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go over to see this. When the Lord saw that he had caught Moses' attention, I bet he did, God called to him from the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Now read the rest with me. Here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, God told him. Take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. Now, we're going to take some time to just adore God together, to just be in awe of God. Now, when you read this story, uh, you can kind of make it an intellectual exercise and wonder, well, how does a bush catch on fire and not be consumed? Or we could wonder and ponder, like how many lumens was the light coming from the bush? But here's what people of faith, I think, are called to do. That is, we might want to take off our shoes today and recognize that we are standing on holy ground, that the presence of the almighty God awaits us and invites us in this moment to worship him. So you might want to kick off your shoes, but let's stand together and let's give the Lord praise as our team leads us today.
That's awesome. Well, we're going to continue to worship. And as we do, we're going to enter into a time of prayer. And I invite you to use your imagination for a moment in prayer. And to imagine yourself in a peaceful place. It might be a beach, or it might be in a forest, um, a park bench, <laughs> maybe a, a favorite place in your home, some place of peace. I invite you to imagine yourself there in your mind. And as you're there, I invite you to see Jesus coming and joining you in that place. And he can look however you imagine him to look. He might be walking next to you or sitting next to you. Just imagine him joining you. And as you imagine the Lord with you, looking at you and loving you, being present to you. I invite you to notice and bring to mind what it is you really like about him. What do you even love about him? It might be something of his characteristics. It's personally meaningful to you. His love or grace, mercy, and to just share that to him, with him, to speak that to him in your mind. If you're not sure what to say, it could be something simple like, I honor you, I adore you, I worship you. Jesus, we do adore you together this morning and we sing your praises and we say as your beloved ones, the ones you care so much about, we say you are holy, you are our comforter, you are our good shepherd, you are our great and mighty redeemer and we put our trust in you today and may you and your Father and your Holy Spirit be glorified and honored and praised in this place among your people, your children today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to worship and sing into the Lord. From the earth to the sky. From the earth to the sky.
beautiful you are. You may be seated. So confession. Confession means to agree with God about what God already knows about us. Now, we're made in the image of God, we know that, but we are also sinners in need of grace and mercy. Uh, Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12, reminds us of our spirit of repentance. This was King David's prayer after he had committed the sins of murder and adultery. Today, we're going to read this together with the right side a reading first and the left side reading second, and there's going to be some space in between the sections of the reading for your own quiet reflections before God, where you can share your personal confessions with him. And as you do, we just ask that you allow Jesus to to wash you clean of the sin that you carry. In Christ, we become the righteousness of God. We trade our sin for his faithfulness and love and complete goodness all the virtue and integrity that is his, he gives to us as a free gift. We merely need to ask and receive. So let us now confess our sins to our gracious God together. Pastor Wes is going to help the right side reading, and I will help the left side reading. All right, let's pray together. Will you join me? Have mercy on me, O God because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Let's take time for our personal confession before God. Let's continue with these words of David, this prayer together. Right side, will you join me? Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Let us take a few more moments for personal confession before God. Let's continue together to pray these words. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Again, let us take time for personal confession before God. Friends, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
you are forgiven. Let's say that again. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. So let's stand together and sing. Amen.
You may be seated. Well, that's a good song. <laughs> Whew, that's a good song. I about blew out my voice, Kyle, trying to sing that with you. <laughs> we've adored God. We have confessed our sins before God. We've heard the good news, and now we're going to give thanks to God. We're just going to focus on giving thanks as we prepare our hearts to come to this table of the Lord today because when Jesus gathered with his disciples over and over again, he did so with thanksgiving, taking bread, giving thanks, taking the cup, giving thanks. That's what the word Eucharist, that's what the word communion is all about, is uh, to be grateful for what God has done. And friends, um, this is a good way to live life, living life with gratitude. And sometimes I can easily forget that, but gratitude is so powerful to change the atmosphere right in our daily life, to change the way our mind is working to turn our attention to give thanks to God. Uh, my son, when he was growing up, we taught him a song. Uh, his name's Caleb. And when we were, uh, just when he was a little guy, we taught him this song that we sang before every meal, and it's called Johnny Appleseed. And uh, so Caleb really liked this song. I mean, he loved the song. And whenever we would say, it's time to eat, let's pray, he immediately started singing. And it didn't matter where we were or what we were doing. In fact, one time we were out at a very fancy restaurant with some extended family, and we were there, and it's one of those restaurants you got to kind of be quiet in, you know. But um, we were there, and one of my uh, relatives said, uh, before the meal, let's have a blessing, I'll pray. And I'm like, oh, no. And uh, <laughs> that's when Caleb started. He's like, pray. Oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Even the waiters, you know, started applauding. What else are you going to do, right? Well, that's a good way to live life. In fact, when's the last time you stopped and recognized, I stopped and recognized, that the Lord has indeed been good to us. When's the last time you looked at the photos on your phone and said, thank you, Lord, instead of just running to the next thing? I know sometimes it's hard to give thanks. Some of us may be filled with trouble today and worry. I get it. And yet giving thanks might be what we need to find that living hope that still is present even in the midst of the trouble, that we would recognize the Lord's been good to us. Even in the midst of trouble, even whatever you're going through today, you've got breath in your lungs. The Lord's been good to you. You've got clothing on your body. The Lord's been good to you. You've got a, a place to sit today. The Lord has been good to you. We can gather together for worship on this World Communion Sunday while many Christ followers are gathering, not in freedom, but in hiding because they're being persecuted, we can give God thanks today. The Lord has been good to us. And we're gonna try something different in this time of worship where we're gonna give God thanks. And I wanna invite us each to do so in our own voice. And we're gonna do so all at the same time. Okay, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be good. So I want you to try it with me, all right? So just think right now, how has God been good to you? Just what, what are four or five things you wanna thank God for and I'm going to turn off my microphone, Kemp, and before that, I'll, I'll say, let's start. And you just say that prayer out loud. If you want to whisper it, that's fine. But if you want to go ahead and shout it, that's okay. My son, Caleb, he shouted his songs of thanksgiving. And I've been known to say uh, thanksgiving very loud whenever my team scores the winning touchdown. And so it's okay to praise God in that same way, right? And so we're going to do that together. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Let's give God thanks on the count of three. One, two, three. And so, Lord, we thank you for every blessing that you have given to us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said together, amen, amen. We're going to continue in this time of thanksgiving by preparing our hearts to come to the Lord's table. And I'd like to invite those that are helping to serve communion today, if you'll go ahead and make your way to your stations. And as they're coming, let me share some words of instruction for all of us. 
In just a moment, an usher will come to your uh, row, and when your row is released, you're invited to come down the center aisle, and there are four stations here in the sanctuary, two in the front, two in the center, and come to that nearest one and take a piece of bread, dip it into the grape juice. We use grape juice here, not alcohol, so this is a safe table for everybody. And after you've taken the elements to yourself, wherever you are in the sanctuary, you're invited to come down the center aisle and come and to kneel. You can also, if you need uh, gluten-free elements, uh, you're invited wherever you are in the sanctuary to come and receive those. They'll be available at a station right here at the front of the sanctuary. After you've come and spent some time in prayer or receiving the elements, you can return to your rows through the outside aisle. Today, as a part of our uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to be giving God our tithes and our offerings and faith promise dollars as well during this time. There'll be a, a place for your offerings right here at the front of the sanctuary as well as another one in the middle of the sanctuary. And as an act of thanksgiving, I encourage you to give with great joy today. We're going to prepare our hearts by joining in what's called the Great Thanksgiving Prayer. And this is an interactive back and forth. We're going to do this together, all right? But we're all coming before the Lord. The Lord is our audience right now. And your parts will be on the screen. Here we go. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on earth and together. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending song. Join me in these words. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death. You made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And Jesus commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth, and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. We remember that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. Also, when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. And as often as you drink it, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we proclaim together the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout this world. Strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to this whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. And all God's people said together, amen. amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the table of the Lord is set and you are invited to come.
No hide, no death, no life of final breath. Who could ever separate us from your love? No failure, no mistake, and no loneliness or pain. Who could ever separate us from your love? Could ever separate us from your love? And on the other side of everything I'm afraid of, you standing with your arms wide open and wide open, even in my deepest doubts and wonder. strong, the life found where I belong, forever I'm alive now in your love, I'm changed, unchained by your ocean and give the morning its light i can't run from your presence and there's no place that far so i run to you my savior and there's safety in your arms if i make my bed in darkness if i try my best to hide and you know the farthest ocean to give the morning So we've taken time to adore God and to confess our sins, and we've given thanks. So now comes a time together to bring our needs before the Lord for healing of our minds, of our bodies, and our souls. The early church has practiced this from the beginning. In fact, James, the half-brother of Jesus and a leader in the early church, he gave these instructions in one of his letters to the followers of Jesus in the first century, and he gives us these, this instruction also. He said, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? 
you should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call on the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you've committed any sins, you'll be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in his name for forgiveness and for healing and for wholeness. We need a savior to rescue us. Just like there are different kinds of pain. There are different types of healing that God can bring into our lives. And God, God's invitation to us is to simply come before him and take the time to pray for what we need and take our needs to him. We're not only to pray for one another, but we need to be humble enough to let others pray for us also. And while we pray, God will choose the path for our healing because healing can come in a lot of different ways. His physical healing, there's emotional healing, um, deliverance from some oppression in our lives, spiritual healing that can reconcile us with God, with ourselves and one another. There are many types. And while we don't know exactly how God will choose to heal, we can be confident that God invites us to pray with boldness and with faith. We can be confident that God hears our prayer. We can be confident that God loves us and he's working the good out in our lives. Now in this time together, we're going to come and we're going to have healing prayer in our lives. There are going to be eight stations to receive healing prayer today. There will be two in the front, two at the side, two in the middle, and two at the sides of the middle. I'd like to invite those helping with the healing prayer to go to their places at this point. At each station, we're going to have anointing with oil, if you so choose. Oil is a symbol of the comfort, healing, and restoration that God desires for us to experience. Now, we're not going to be releasing rose or doing anything formal like that for this experience. You, you need to come as the Holy Spirit leads you to receive the healing prayer that you need. And so now I'd like to invite everybody to stand because we're going to sing. But also, this is the time to come and receive healing prayer at one of these stations.
healing stations are still open and you are welcome to continue to come for prayer as we continue to sing this final song of our service today. together spirit of God
miracle could happen now. We may be running a little late in the service, but friends, we don't want to only pray for ourselves, do we? We don't want to keep it all for ourselves, right? We want to, we want to make sure to pray for our communities and the world also. There's a, there's a prayer that we want to pray together right now. Now, this isn't a prayer that we found on the internet. This is a prayer out of our own journals, out of our own hearts that we want to share together because we really believe that God wants to use this time of prayer to awaken you, to awaken you for revival, not just to pray a rote prayer at the end of a service, but for that God could be birthing in you a new calling. You can have a new stirring for revival and awakening. And so let's pray this prayer together for the world, for our community. Together, let's go. Oh, holy God, consuming fire and gentle shepherd, we come to you today as your beloved children, asking you to set our hearts aflame again. Please bring revival to our church family and lead our community into healing and awakening. We pray for more recovery and less death. We pray that no one would die from an overdose within a 10 mile radius of this church. Oh God, we cry out for our young people, our youth, our children. Meet them in their depression and anxiety. Bless them with an overwhelming sense of your love, freedom, and hope. God, deliver the children of our community from suicide and self-harm. Protect the little ones who are living in homes that are not safe and redeem our children from these situations. Place them in loving families. May all the foster kids in our area find homes, Lord. Call some of us to foster children ourselves that we might be part of your kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and transform the communities of our world. May those who oppress others be brought low and reveal to us where we have been part of injustice instead of fighting against it. Reveal this to us. Change our hearts. Oh God, Lord, we mourn over the history of racism in this country. Forgive us, Lord, for holding prejudice in our hearts against our neighbors. Heal our hearts and minds, Lord. May we be part of the healing of our land. Come, Lord, come and bring your goodness. Bring your peace. Right the wrongs. Make our paths straight and prepare our hearts for your coming. May we recognize your coming, Lord, every hour, every moment, every day. God, we lay our requests before you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. And all God's people said together, amen. 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 Friends, we're going to meet here on Tuesday night for more prayer. So come at six o'clock, be a part of this team that's been praying. And that's where uh, God is just birthing new things. And we can pray all week, wherever we are. That's the cool thing about this conversation. So keep the prayers going to the Lord. Have a conversation with him all day, every day. He loves you most and best. We're going to find out more about it as we be in a new sermon series next week called Identity Theft. We're going to find our true identity as children of God and persons of worth. We'll see you then. God bless you and have a great day.